Hello and welcome to Ticker Climate. My name is Holly Stearns and here on Ticker Climate we tackle the climate crisis that is facing our planet and we examine what actions governments and corporations may look to take in order to prevent the ongoing changes that we face. Now each week we speak with key people in this space and my co-host Scott Hamilton is a climate change and energy expert. He joins me live now. Scott, great to see you as always. Hello Holly, great to see you again. Now, Scott, exciting stuff. Our guest today is Victorian Minister for Energy, Environment and Climate Change, Lily D'Ambrosio. Now, she is a veteran energy minister in Australia and joins us in the lead up to a critical meeting of state and federal energy ministers this coming week. Now, welcome to you, Lily. Great to have your company. Great to be here. Thank you very much. Now, Lily, the big issue this week for the energy and climate policy is a federal government coal keeper program in Australia. Could you just tell us uh, by start by telling us exactly what that is and why Victoria is strongly opposed to it? Well, what's really important here, of course, is that uh, there are many ways to incentivise the development of new energy projects, in particular, of course, zero emissions projects. And that's exactly what we need to be able to plan for the transition away from fossil fuel generation uh, to that clean energy that we absolutely all need uh, to meet our Paris uh, commitments by 2050. Uh, people will know that Victoria is well and truly on the way. We've got a 50% renewable energy target. We've committed to halving our uh, emissions by uh, 2030. Uh, and uh, having capacity uh, mechanism in the market uh, can, if designed properly, uh, can actually help to incentivise the uh, growth of new energy, zero emissions technologies coming into the system. Uh, however, uh, you can also potentially design it uh, to give a leg up uh, to the existing fossil fuel generators. And that is absolutely something that we've drawn a line under as a state government. And we're taking our position very uh, clearly, a very strong position uh, to uh, the national meeting of energy ministers. Uh, we need mechanisms that actually help to incentivise the new build of zero emissions technologies, energy uh, coming into our system, rather than paying for existing fossil fuel generators to stay in the market. Remarkable. Certainly it's uh, great to see the states showing this leadership um, again, having to do the heavy lifting, I would actually say. Um, <laughs> so also on the agenda this week, Minister, there's um, something about a solar con congestion sort of me mechanism that's being um, said by some of the developers that it's going to slow down solar rollout. So what do you think Minister Taylor's doing here? He seems to be propping up coal and slowing down solar. Is that what's going on or what's your take well, on it? We, well, we know, Scott, that uh, there's been uh, zero uh, leadership from a national level in terms of the transition that we need to make all of us uh, to a clean energy future. And uh, everything that we've achieved, uh, certainly in Victoria, has been because of Victorian government effort and ambition. Uh, and detractors certainly have existed uh, at a national level, and unfortunately that's still the case. Look, uh, we're very carefully examining uh, the proposed uh, rule change that you uh, have referred to. Uh, we don't want to see anything that slows down the take up of solar energy uh, across our state. Uh, we've had a, a massive increase in interest from Victorians to become uh, part of the solar energy revolution, having a, a solar generator on their roof. Uh, and uh, we're, we're smashing it when it comes to uh, providing the rebates to Victorians to effectively put a power uh, system on their roof at virtually no upfront cost. So uh, we need to keep promoting that rather than looking at any ways of putting the brake on. So we'll, we'll examine any proposals uh, very carefully uh, to ensure that there aren't any, there isn't anything that puts a brake on uh, the take up of solar. Absolutely. Um, and there's um, one of the, um, and it was terrific to see Victoria being, I think, leading the other states in terms of these issues. Uh, one of the comments that's come back from uh, one of the in industry associations is that Victoria really did a similar deal with your, your lawn power station. Um, what, what would you say to that, Minister? Well, that's just blatantly wrong. Uh, the agreement uh, we struck with Energy Australia is effectively a model for how you should be doing it, how you should be managing a transition. And in effect, it actually delivers the early retirement of your lawn 
the early retirement of your lawn. That's what it's about, bringing it forward by four years, um, providing also for a large battery uh, to give us that uh, additional uh, dispatchability that we need in the market. And importantly, of course, enabling uh, seven years for the industry, for the sector and the workforce to transition. Uh, people often like to throw around ideas about how we should uh, transition tomorrow. Uh, you can't transition tomorrow. What you can do is have a proper plan that takes into account uh, workforce transition, uh, uh, development of new skills, but also uh, sending a really clear and strong signal to the market that this uh, energy will no longer be there uh, from 20, uh, 20, uh, 28. Uh, so please come forward and invest your money, invest in new technology, invest in the replacement energy, zero emissions energy. Uh, so it's as much a signal to the rest of the market that Victoria remains open uh, and we have the really strong policy settings uh, that investments want to see to give them the confidence to come forward and invest. We want those billions of investment dollars. We want those jobs created in construction and all of the related jobs and also that new energy technology that we need to manage uh, a decarbonising uh, agenda that we have for uh, a clean energy future. Scott, I wanted to get your thoughts on this as well. What do you think this means for Australia's transition to zero carbon? Yeah, look, this coal, this coal keeper program, which is being talked about, um, I think we need to make no mistake, this is really a carbon tax. But unlike a tax that's going to stop pollution, it's actually, as the minister said, it's actually going to give money to the coal fired power stations and the parents of those power stations, not the workers, which is a really important point we made the other day. Uh, the other point was that we had Tim Buckley from I IEFA on Ticker Climate the other week, Holly, as you would re recall, and they've done some important modelling. And actually, this coal keeper program is going to increase energy bills by up to $430 per annum, which is a lot of money. So they're actually taking money from working families and putting it in the pockets of coal companies and keeping these clunkers alive. So it's the complete wrong thing to do when we should be reducing emissions, we should have orderly closure of coal-fired power stations. Now, Lily, what else is on the agenda for the minister's meeting? Well, look, uh, what uh, is in, uh, there's a number of uh, uh, programs that uh, the Energy Security Board have been working on uh, as part of the post 2025 market review. Uh, so we'll look forward to hearing from them about uh, uh, other proposed changes that uh, they're wanting to put to us for discussion. But importantly, here, uh, Victoria uh, is going to be really clear that uh, we need to understand the analysis, we need to know what the analysis is, that uh, with any capacity market mechanism, what will the impact be? Uh, is it going to be a break on the creation of new energy that we need, zero emissions uh, energy? Uh, will it provide a leg up to the existing fossil fuel generators? Uh, and uh, if that's the case, then uh, we're going in the wrong direction. That's the reality of it. So you can design it well. I know that there are some people who think that you shouldn't have a capacity market at all. Um, the Vict Victoria's view is, and my view has been now for a while, that uh, uh, there is no silver bullet here. Uh, you can, uh, it can be helpful if it's designed well, uh, but it's got to have a focus on uh, signaling and facilitating the creation of new replacement energy zero emissions energy. It can't be used uh, to keep uh, existing fossil fuel generators in the market. Uh, it doesn't work, it go, it's taking us in the wrong direction. So uh, I'm hoping uh, that uh, some uh, common sense prevails uh, and that we'll have the opportunity to discuss this at length uh, and be very clear. Everyone can be very clear all Victorians can be very clear what Victoria's position is. Uh, and we need, if we're going to be doing this, we need to do it well. It's got to head us in the direction of decarbonising our electricity system, facilitating new build zero emissions uh, energy and not supporting, not keeping coal in its place. Uh, that's not, that's the wrong direction. We know that. Uh, and uh, we're not going to basically have a situation evolve where it's going to be imposed on us. We don't want that. It won't happen. 
Lily, I wanted to get your opinion on where you think Australia sits in regards to the rest of the world when it comes to tackling climate change at the moment. And what do you hope to see from Australia when they go to COP26 in Glasgow in November? Well, this is a bit of a guessing game, isn't it? Um, we've seen uh, uh, some uh, indications that uh, uh, the Commonwealth Government may decide that uh, it could land on a, a, a net zero emissions target by 2050. I'll believe it when I see it. But, you know, look, the reality is uh, Australia uh, is seen as a global laggard. Uh, when it comes to climate change. What I do encourage all of those global investors out there, uh, all of those uh, jurisdictions out there, uh, look beyond the Commonwealth, look at what the states are doing. Uh, and Victoria is absolutely uh, smashing it when it comes to setting really strong ambition. Uh, we will have the fastest rate of decarbonising or cu uh, cutting our emissions of any of the jurisdictions in Victoria between now and 2030. Uh, that is something that is leadership. Uh, but we shouldn't let any Commonwealth government off the hook. Uh, people should continue to put pressure on the Commonwealth government uh, to take something sensible uh, to uh, COP. Uh, it needs to do that. Uh, at the same time, though, um, we've been around uh, this uh, merry-go-round uh, quite a number of times, too many times uh, for anybody's good. Um, so we'll just wait and see what happens. But in the meantime, uh, Victoria will continue to do uh, what we're doing. Uh, we won't be waiting for anyone. Uh, we'll keep doing, uh, t having strong leadership out there, uh, decarbonising our energy system. You know, we've got the most ad uh, advanced plan for decarbonising our economy of all of the states in the country. We've got a very, uh, very strong, comprehensive plan uh, to reduce our emissions by half, as I said, not just uh, in the energy system, but also across different sectors uh, in the economy, including transport, land use, agriculture, and, and the other areas, of course. Uh, and uh, we, we've we got that, we're backing that with legislation and uh, significant investment. And uh, we will do that whilst at the same time creating jobs uh, and creating a new economy, one that is resilient, one that is providing jobs, creating investment uh, environment that is very favourable uh, compared to other states and one that will decarbonise our energy, uh, our, our economy. Lily, a bit of a personal question. Um, you've been Energy Minister since 2014, uh, incredible stuff. You're also Minister for Solar Homes. How does it make you feel taking up such a good fight here? Oh, look, uh, these things uh, don't come with their uh, without their challenges, absolutely. Uh, but we, uh, I'm very pleased that we've been able to uh, really work with local communities and businesses so that there is a really full appreciation that, uh, that you need to take communities uh, along the ride, along the journey. Uh, we need to help communities, no matter what their pay packet is, no matter the size of their mortgage or whether they're in rental properties uh, or businesses that are small or large. Uh, there's got to be something in it for everybody uh, when it comes to managing uh, the decarbonising of our economy and in particular solar uh, and renewable energy. Uh, look, we've had the fastest uptake of solar on people's rooftops of, of any state. Um, where else can you go uh, to get a rebate and a no interest loan uh, offering from the government uh, at virtually uh, no upfront cost uh, to a consumer to put solar panels on their roof? And we know, of course, people are really wanting batteries too, and our solar homes program is rolling that out, solar hot water. We're now going into um, rolling out 250,000 um, heating systems, heating and cooler systems to swap out uh, the energy guzzling uh, old heating systems that a lot of people have in their homes. So, Great stuff. Um, saving people's dollar, uh, do, sorry, saving people on their power bills, uh, giving them an opportunity to also perhaps cut back on their emissions and cutting uh, how much power they're actually using uh, to stay uh, cool in summer and warm in winter. Wonderful stuff, Lily. Um, thank you so much for your time. It's been great to speak with you. Scott, I know you've enjoyed it as well. Very much so. Thank you very much, Lily. Thanks, Lily thank and Scott. You, That's all we have time for today on Ticket Climate. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Until next time, I'm Holly Stearns.